This little thing is called the PB70. It's Datalight's 1.2K, two degree beamer. That's what it does. That's what it's built to do. A long ways away from a little classic 150 watt data light, but it is still a data light. You have a homogeneous two degree beam that you can send far distances, just like you would hope a xenon light would work, but this one can be plugged into a standard household socket. Yes, that's true. You do not need a generator for this, depending on how many you have. Of course, you may have to do that, but as a standalone light head that you can reimagine using reflectors, yes, this one can be plugged into, as Ditta would say, grandma's kitchen. The parabolic reflector is built to have a unique symbiotic relationship with the lamp itself. That is how it gives you a two degree, 70 centimeter beam. Ergo, the title, PB70. It's very simple to use. If you've used a standard HMI before, then you know it goes on, it goes off. It has hot restrike. That's pretty much it. There's not that much more to it. You need to point it into the location you would like to light, hopefully a reflector, and reimagine it in another way. So what's, what's the big deal here, right? Well, the big deal is that you can get a massive amount of light into one space just like you would use a small little data light in order to pinpoint your light source and really carve out light, this one is like threading a needle with a very hot, intense beam. The light head itself is about 109 pounds, so it does require two people to put on a stand. The light head comes with the yoke, which is fastened by a kip handle here. And it has a honeycomb that you can put in the front in order to clean up some of the beam if you need to or to just try to get some of the beam away from a lens. In order to do that, you unscrew these safety latches on the front of the light head and create enough space for you to slide the honeycomb in and you put those back on. So that is the only accessory at this point that you can get with this, except I've heard that there is some type of a gel holder that would be coming out, so that would be kind of interesting. You could carve out pieces of the 70 centimeter beam to actually allocate to a certain color of light. That would be kind of cool. I haven't seen it yet, but keep an eye out for that. The light itself comes with the yoke, which has a junior pin on it. I recommend buying it with the case, this roadie case that you can get. One, because you can slide your reflectors in there in the front. You can also put your DB1200 ballast in there. Basically travel with everything you need with the light head in there. Now, the case you'll find acts as a stand because this light head, unlike a xenon, can be placed in any position and not overheat. And it can also get some light rain on it, even if you're pointing up directly into the air you can actually get away with putting this out in some weather conditions. The fact that you can hang it or put it on a stand in any direction and it not overheat definitely separates itself from a xenon light. I'm gonna let this thing come up a little bit here. Now, I'm probably 15 feet away from my number one reflector over here. That's a one by one meter reflector. And I'm gonna mosey my way over to my set here. And as that comes up, then it's gonna be super bright because I'm very close to it in this particular setup inside this little studio. But guess what? In order to get this to actually work within this studio, I would have to go across the street and get a permit and get a condor and put that thing up in the sky, probably about 30 feet to get the same type of look that I'm doing here. Except that I have the light head right in front of me and I'm just reflecting it in order to collapse the amount of space that I need to do it. All right, so this just gives you a little overview to the light and kind of gives you an idea of what this concept is all about. So. I think we should just basically set it up, get some readings for you, do a very standard demo, be as objective as we can about it, and then take a look at what it's like when you use it with reflectors. Ah, oh, man, crazy. All right, so my PB70 is set about 30 feet from my back wall. 
let's just bring it on over and take a look. All right, let's get this thing at around 10 feet here. I've got about Forty thousand foot candles at ten feet. Let's check fifteen feet. About twenty-five thousand foot candles at fifteen feet. There should be a convergence point right around here. Then we start spreading out back here at around thirty feet. And we're getting about ten thousand foot candles here. Again, we have about twenty four inch diameter spot that's here at around 30 feet. That's a ton of light still packed into a small, small spot. I mean, this two degrees at 30 feet, you know, this is probably around 24 inches in diameter, the, the usable bright, bright part of the beam. I mean, you could literally use that outside a building. You could go a couple of stories and hit a 50 centimeter number two reflector and get a nice spot of sunlight coming through a window. You don't have to go across the street. You don't have to go get a crane. You don't have to go and get a larger light source. It's got pretty cool implications for production. But let's take a look at what it looks like with some reflectors. Let's get the data light light stream reflectors out. Let's do a number one, two, three, four, and also the gray bounce that comes in the one meter size. We'll see what kind of outputs we get. This particular reflector is a standard one by one meter reflector from data light. So on one side, we have a number one reflective surface with a spread that is a redirector. So let's check out the number one. My subject here is, it's too bright for the human eye at this distance, but you know, I'll give you some readings here anyway, so you get an idea of what it's like. So bouncing off that, I'm about 30 some odd feet away from the light source and I've got about 6,000 500 foot candles here in this area. Again, really hot, tight beam, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that board around and on the other side is the gray bounce or the number four like single-sided reflector. different. All right, that's more civilized for a single subject. Same distance, I haven't moved my light, I haven't moved my reflector, all I've done is changed it to a number four like reflector. Okay, so the data light PB70 is 20 feet away from a one by one meter light stream reflector. I am 15 feet away from it and I am getting a 175 foot candles from that distance. This is the widest spreading of the reflectors, 90 degrees off the surface of the reflector. All right, so this is the one by one meter number two data light light stream reflector. And to be completely honest with you, this is the first time I'm actually seeing it with the PB70. The one I've had in my showroom is a, a number one four and that's the one I've always used. And I've always wanted to see this and I am completely not surprised by how incredible this is. I haven't changed my distances. I'm 20 foot from the reflector and I on the receiving side, I'm about 15 feet from the reflector and I'm getting a massive amount of light, but I'm also spreading it because it's a number two reflector at about 12 degrees. So let's say it's getting two over there, three, deg three degrees over there. Let's say I'm getting less than a 20 degree light beam here, which is still tighter than any Fresnel could ever deliver. And it's beautifully homogenous and it just kind of gradually dissipates into the darkness. And let's see what I actually get from here. I got 1700 foot candles sitting in this spot, which is probably the warmest spot of the beam. Eesh. Yikes. On the other side of this number two is a number three. So we're just gonna flip it around and take a look at the results from the number three.
So here is the number three one by one meter reflector. And I have to say at this distance, it's quite usable. It's quite doable. If I'm, if I'm actually a subject in this scene and I'm blocking around this, this, this is a very doable source. It's bright, it's warm, very hot, and it has a really nice spread. I'm getting a nice zoned light around my stage here. So let's get a reading from same distances. About 450 foot candles. So the number three reflector has a 50 degree spread and Ditto often refers to a virtual light source, which is quite interesting, especially in this number three and the number two. Because the PB70 has such a tight beam, it's kind of defying the square law to a certain degree. It's cheating, but it's defying it. What you can do is you could actually imagine that we're taking a light source and actually putting it behind that reflector like a cone. Okay, so if you look at the outside edges of the beam and you travel behind the reflector and you make a point behind the reflector, that is where the light feels like it's coming from. That is the type of shadows that it's casting. And that is a unique relationship that the PB70 has with reflecting light. That's something that is very unique to this light head and these reflectors. And that's the light stream system. Mm -hmm.